special edition of the Sobros Network Hot Minute coming to you live from a hotel in Chattanooga. It's WrestleMania weekend. And while Nature Boy's out covering the film festival, I thought, you know what, Big Natural, you got a little time to yourself. Why don't you make another hot minute? And since it's WrestleMania weekend, no, we're not specifically talking WrestleMania. Let's say, uh, I get a little fuffa. I get a little fuffa on me. But we're going to be talking about pro wrestling and why Randy Orton's RKO is the most deadly finisher of all time. Three reasons. Number one, it just does damage to your body. You put something along your chin line and throat right there. And that's, the, that's the patellar tendon, if I'm not mistaken. So you just put something there, and then you just slam into something. <sighs> just from the velocity on which I just executed that maneuver on myself. I think I have a concussion. So I can't imagine. It's it's only amplified when Randy Orton hooks the RKO. Two, the RKO literally can come out of nowhere. I mean, you think about you think about all the places that you've seen an RKO hooked. It's not dependent upon any other conditions. The only conditions that have to be met for the RKO to transpire is there has to be someone standing or falling, and there has to be Randy Orton. That's all it is. As long as two people are in the same vicinity, the RKO is going to happen. Think about how the Haluva kick works. You have to trust that your opponent's just going to be in the turnbuckle at some point. Well, what if he's not in the turnbuckle? What are you going to do then? Or it's like the phenomenal forearm. Like, what's what's AJ Styles going to do if uh, you know his opponent's clean on the other side of the ring? Like, they have to be within striking distance. Not with the RKO. Not with the RKO whatsoever. It can come out of nowhere. Hey, out of nowhere. That sounds like a good marketing gimmick. Trace, you can't see me. My time is now. The amount of effort that Randy Orton has to exert when performing the RKO is next to nothing. And that makes it easy to connect with. Even something as simple as Shawn Michaels' sweet chin music. You know, you've... You've got to you got to kind of bend. You got you got to be flexible. Now you're gonna pull your groin. You're gonna pull your groin trying to hook the sweet gin music. Trust me, I've been down that road. You got to aim correctly. You, you got to you, you've still got to bend and strike with enough force to knock your opponent out. It's not the case with the arcade. All Randy Orton needs is his own momentum. He can go up. He can come down, and that's crucial. The longer a match goes, the more tired someone gets. So if your finishing move requires a lot of force to execute, it's going to be sloppy. You're not going to be able to do it right. Randy Orton, thankfully, can still get the teller tendon, even if he's wrestled an hour-long match. All he has to do is jump up and make sure his arm comes around you like that, and then boom, boom, done, dead. Case in point, look at Kevin Owens. Look at all the work he has to do to hook the pop-up power. You have to take your opponent, and you have to drag their body weight, rip them into the, into the rope. Then you stand there and wait for them to come back, and then you just grab them by the bosom. Just lift. You gotta lift them up. Lift them up, you kidding me? And then you have to slam them with enough velocity to make sure that their shoulders stay up. It's just so much work. So much work. Randy Orton has mastered the art of the finishing move, and that's why he's won so many world championships. That was stupid. That was fucking stupid. Randy Orton has mastered the art of a good finishing move, and that is why he's won so many championships.